As the number of immigrants rose in, 18, in the 1880s, economic conditions in some areas, those same areas, worsened correspondingly. Congress began to pass immigration legislation. Let's see, um, nearly three quarters of federal inmates, 71.4%, are either African American or of Latino descent. 71.4% of all people incarcerated. That's 37.6 and 33.8% respectively for each group. The problem with this is that these two groups collectively make up only 21.3% of the entire U.S. population. 71.4% of the popula prison population is made up by 21.3% of the entire population. And if you look at the world slavery map, that's going to pan out pretty well. All right, Whitey is not the racist, Whitey is not the criminal. Um, even though everyone says the opposite. This pattern is seen with white Americans as well. Uh, the pattern being Asians make up 1.5% of the federal prisons and 8.4% of the national population. Whites make up 25% of the federal population but 63% of the US population. So white and brown people are the exact opposite of yellow and white people. Or I mean black and brown people are the exact opposite of white and yellow people. Namely, their prison populations are higher than their representative populations, unlike white and yellow people. Uh, white females comprise 49% of the prison population as compared to black females who accounted for 22% of the female population. Now there's a six time the gender sentencing gap is six times larger than the race sentencing gap. So the females are actually closer to their population representation. However, the um, the sentencing for black females was twice that of the rate for white females even then. Um, African American, Puerto Rican American, and Indian American, Indian American being essentially Mexican or Na South American genetically, uh, unlike what they'll say, have the highest rates of incarceration. Big surprise there. Um, even in other countries, even where the countries where there are major majorities, it's the same thing. So, compared to their minorities of other countries. So, it holds out the world over. Alright, um, in a 2017 report of the Federal American Immigration Reform, a nonprofit group, um, they report estimates that the annual cost of illegal immigration at the federal, state, and local level to be about 116 billion. That's split up between uh, 31 billion at the federal and 86 billion at state and local levels. White Americans are now a numerical minority in half a dozen states and throughout the world already. They will be the nation's, America's, n numerical minority in little more than 25 years. And for now, for the first time ever, there are fewer whites and, than non-white children under 10 years of age. This is a significant change. The U.S. population has been predominantly white since the founding of Jamestown in 1607. As late as, eight, as 1950, 1950 um, whites accounted for about 90% 90, 90 of the nation's population, according to census figures. But in the past six decades, White share the overall white share of the overall population has dropped to 61 percent. Demographic projections suggest that whites are to become the numerical minority in 2044. That's less than 25 years. Um, when the nation will become a majority minority country, whites are already a minority in the world. Now we're being run out of our last bastion. Thanks a lot, women. Our female voting majority loves Democrats. Democrats love open borders. That's why I named this video what I did. Our, our conscription immune affirmative action enabled female voting majority is squarely at fault. All right, today is National Sweetheart or National Sorry Charlie Day, where people essentially reflect on their being rejected and what they've learned from it. Well, I learned that my country, my dad, and uh, the church hate me and only want to take, take, take and then stab me in the back. So I learned to treat them the way that they treat me rather than the ideal way.